Ikigai fake news. That's something I'm going to talk about today, so stick around. Hi, my name is Sachi Takamiya. I am the author of the Ikigai Diet and Ikigai Biohacking. Have you ever seen this diagram, this Venn diagram? Yeah, uh, so it's say the center of the diagram is say Ikigai, and it say what you love, what you are good at, what you can be paid for and what the world needs. Now, this diagram always appear, yeah, uh, with a blog post about Ikigai or YouTube video about Ikigai. And for many people, Ikigai means this diagram, right? However, uh, if you're Japanese, you know it isn't what uh, Ikigai means to Japanese people. Therefore, this is a misinterpreted, yeah, a concept of ikigai, yeah. But this is like shared all over the world, like a thousand upon thousand of bloggers and YouTubers talk about ikigai using this diagram, yeah, which is wrong, yeah. So in some ways, it is like a fake news. Right. Uh, although people probably didn't have a wrong intention, it was not done uh, through the purpose of spreading misinformation. But by accident, that's the wrong interpret wrong interpretation, kind of a, a spread worldwide. Yeah. Right. Um, and then when I actually saw this diagram. I felt it was strange and I felt very puzzled because it didn't really represent the Japanese me meaning of Ikigai. However, I wasn't sure because maybe it is possible uh, like some Japanese psychologists, you know, came up with this new concept of Ikigai or something, Just did, I just didn't know, yeah? But now uh, we know that it is not true. I mean, this diagram was made by mistake, yeah. So this book, Ikigai Kan by Nicholas Kemp reveals the secret behind this Ikigai phenomenon, how this misinterpreted version of Ikigai spread worldwide, right? So let's look into this diagram one more time, right? Okay, so what happened was uh, originally this chart was purpose kind of diagram. So the, the center of the word was called purpose. And then uh, it was a, some kind of a, uh, somebody made this one uh, for the purpose of self, for the purpose of self improvement. But then one person thought it would be kind of cool to replace the word a purpose to Ikigai. And then he wrote a blog post about it without having any wrong intention. Just he thought it was kind of be cool. And after all, it was just a blog post and nobody was going to read it. Yeah? I mean, he didn't know that it was going to go viral. But uh, for some reason, it went viral. And many people start sharing uh, his blog post. And then it just became an Ikigai phenomenon. And even BBC wrote an article about Ikigai based on this diagram, right? Um, but um, yeah, and then he later uh, wrote a blog post saying it was, but it was just a mistake. I mean, he just, you know, changed the word to Ikigai. And this chart doesn't have anything to do with the word Ikigai, right? So now we know this is not true, right? Okay, now let's examine uh, this chart, yeah? Uh, how this doesn't represent the Japanese word Ikigai, okay? So if you ask me what my Ikigai is, I, I have several Ikigais, okay? Let's say uh, morning coffee, you know, I drink coffee every morning, that's my Ikigai, or uh, morning walk. In my case, I got Nordic walking, and that is my Ikigai. And writing is my, you know, I'm, I'm a writer, and I have a passion for writing. So writing is my Ikigai. It gives me juice to live. It gives me motivation to live. Yeah. And I spread the Ikigai diet and Ikigai biohacking. This is my mission. 
Yeah. So this is my ikigai too. Yeah. I, I feel strong motivation to continue living and staying healthy uh, because I want to spread this message. Yeah. Right. Okay. So about my coffee. Yeah. Is it something I love? Yes. It is something I love. Is it something I am good at? No, I mean, there isn't a performance about drinking coffee, right? And it's something that I get paid for it. No, I don't get paid for drinking coffee. And it is something that uh, the world needs. No, I don't think so. I don't think the world care if I drink coffee or not, right? Okay. So how about my walking, my Nordic walking? It is something I love. Yeah, it is something I love to do. It is something I'm good at. No, I don't think there's a performance in Nordic walking, right? And is it something I get paid? No, I don't get paid for Nordic walking. And is it something what the world needs? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, like now it is very critical to stay healthy. So any kind of healthy habit, you know, such as, you know, on a healthy diet or practicing intermittent fasting or doing exercises probably serve the society and the community. Yeah, especially in this period. Yeah, because uh, the healthier you are, you are less likely to spread any kind of disease, any kind of disease. Yeah, you are less likely to less likely to catch any kind of disease if you if you stay if you're healthier. Therefore, staying healthy can uh, help other people around you as well. Therefore, in some ways, you can say uh, this is something the world needs. But you know, individual action is a very small thing. So it is a very small thing. So uh, I don't think it is something that world needs. People don't really care whether I go Nordic walking or not, right? Okay, so how about my writing? Yeah, that's something I love to do. And it's something that I'm good at doing. And it's something I get paid for it because I'm a writer, I publish books, so I get paid for it. And then that's something the world needs. Yeah, I, I'd like to think so. I'd like to think that uh, my the content I write uh, serve uh, the community and the world, right? And how about spreading the Ikigai diet and Ikigai biohacking? That's something I love to do. And that is something I am good at. Now, uh, because I'm Japanese, I am introducing the Japanese concept or the kind of a way of thinking based on Japanese natural health, uh, which uh, you wouldn't probably know if you're not Japanese. So by being Japanese, I, I, I have access to this information. And then I speak English. Therefore, I get to spread this, con this content uh, in English. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm probably one of the few Japanese people who write books in English or you know, uh, make YouTube videos in English. So in that sense, I can say it is my field of expertise, right? And I get paid for it. Uh, and also, uh, I think, again, I'd like to think this is something the world needs, right? So for writing and spreading the Ikigai diet and Ikigai biohacking, yeah, I think those two can, uh, uh, this chart can apply to those two. However, walking and morning coffee, no, this diagram doesn't apply. One thing, uh, apply to all four ikigais. That is what you love, yeah? Uh, I, I love coffee, I love walking, I love writing, I love spreading the ikigai diet and ikigai biohacking. So does it mean what you love is the requirement of ikigai? Not necessarily, because there are times when you go through some tragic experiences or some kind of a uh, difficult times, right? And then some time you have none of those. You know, you cannot do anything you love to do. The life is basically pain and struggle. But even out of those situations, you try to find your ikigai. The good example is uh, during the war period. Yeah, people who uh, spend their life uh, in a war, yeah, there's so much suffering, yeah, but somehow they found a meaning in their life, they found their ikigai, and that is, uh, for example, even though this painful experience can 
be your learning, the learning for your soul, or because you have this tragic experience, you can tell the story to later generation so that they will not repeat yeah, uh, this tragedy again. So that can become your ikigai, the source of motivation to carry on, right? So, but that is not something you love or something you're good at or anything. Uh, therefore, if you are thinking of ikigai with this chart, yeah, it, it is very difficult, yeah? Yeah, so you do need to learn what ikigai truly mean in Japanese. Now, what about ikigai is an Okinawan concept? That's another misinterpretation spread worldwide, right? So in Dan Butner's TED talk, yeah, I think he talks about uh, ikigai is an Okinawan concept, and then this is a secret to longevity there. And then it kind of spread all over the world. And many people think ikigai is an Okinawan word but it is a Japanese word. It is a shared concept throughout Japan, regardless of your uh, region in Japan, yeah? Uh, people have Ikigai in Nagano, in Shiga, in Tokyo, Osaka, as well as the people in Okinawa. So it isn't unique to Okinawa, right? And I don't blame Dan Butner for it either, you know, because, you know, you cannot know everything. I mean, it's impossible to, you know, understand every single information in detail, yeah? Like I've written a, a novel, yeah? Uh, which has seven characters representing, you know, different race and culture, and then 11 countries appear uh, in the story, yeah? Although I checked, yeah, a lot of the information in the area and so on, still, uh, I always miss. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to cover every single thing. I mean, like I did use, for example, names for each seven characters, and uh, the name does exist in that culture. But I mean, if you examine in detail, if the background information of that character uh, matches the name or not, that's something I don't understand. For example, I used uh, a, a pelvian shaman, you know, Mikaela Mamane, but, you know, I, I wouldn't know about pelvian culture in detail to, to know that. So it is possible to miss, you know, a certain detailed information. So I'm, I'm not saying, you know, it was a problem or anything like that. Yeah. So it just, uh, uh, it sometimes happens when you cover a vast uh, area uh, in your book. And it's not a mistake because yeah, people in Okinawa does have it do have a ikigai, yeah. So you can say ikigai is an Okinawan concept, but it isn't unique to Okinawa, yeah. But it's just like saying American dream, Californian dream, you know. How would you feel if someone start talking about Californian dream? You, you know, in California, there is this uh, a special concept where anyone can succeed if you put a lot of energy into it, regardless of your background or education. You don't need to be born rich. You don't need to go to university or anything. If you have a great idea and if you put a lot of work into it, anyone can succeed. That is called the Californian dream. Well, it can be true. I mean, probably, well, I'm sure there are such a concept in California. It's first, in fact, California is one of the few places within the United States uh, which has a, a lot of entrepreneur spirit. Yeah, therefore it isn't wrong. However, how would you feel if you live in Texas or if you're from New York? Well, we have that too. It's not unique to Californians. Yeah, and that's called American dream. Right. Therefore, the correct way to understand this is American dream, not a Californian dream. Right. So when you say Ikigai is an Okinawan concept, it just uh, makes Japanese feel like uh, Texans and New Yorkers about Californian dream. And is Ikigai a secret to longevity? So 
many people associate ikigai as a secret to longevity, and it is from Okinawa, um, which is not wrong. I mean, it it is a it is one one of secrets to longevity. However, I don't think uh, ikigai was considered to be a secret to longevity before Dan Butner's talk. Yeah, maybe there was this kind of concept, but I'm not sure. I mean, now it is. Now, even in Japan, uh, Ikigai is often considered to be one of the factors of longevity. But I think it is in influenced by Dan Butner's talk and his book. I think after that, some Japanese researchers included Ikigai to be part of longevity factors. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure. But ikigai is not a big word. It, it, not, not many people made a big deal about it. it it's not, you know, it's, it's something people just use in everyday life. And it's not a special concept or anything in Japan. Yeah. But now, as I said, it is a very important uh, part of uh, longevity culture. Um, so I made a video about Nagano. Nagano is uh, Na Nagano is the longest lived prefecture in Japan at the moment. Yeah, and I made a video called Seven Longevity Secrets of Nagano, the King of Japanese Blue Zones. And one of the secrets is Ikigai. I said because Nagano has the highest number of community centers. Now there are community centers everywhere, but sometimes the community centers are far, like you have to you have to drive to get there. Yeah. But in the case of Nagano, because there are so many community centers in every neighborhood, there is one. Therefore, you can probably find the community center within the walking distance. That makes a lot of difference for the residents, especially senior residents there, because you probably have more time to interact with your neighbors. Yeah, to participate in community activities. And that becomes their ikigai, that kind of a, a social bond and interaction with others. And Nagano had the highest number of working seniors too. Now, for many people, work is your ikigai, right? So once you stop working after retirement, uh, many people lose their ikigai. So the fact that Nagano uh, has many senior uh, still working even after retirement uh, contribute to having their ikigai, right? Th therefore, ikigai is is an uh, important factor of longevity in Japan too. However, ikigai has diverse meanings and nuances. It isn't limited to the secret to longevity. Yeah. So therefore, to understand it fully. Uh, yeah, you, you need to understand other meanings of Ikigai too. Now, none of the people who spread the concept had the wrong intention. Yeah, it was accident by this internet culture. Yeah, I think people who spread the concept didn't check the source. And therefore, uh, it, it is a common thing now about the fake news, isn't it? Yeah. If someone shared the news on Facebook and you think, oh, this is a great news and you kind of spread, you share the message. Yeah. With a good intention, because you think this news will probably help, you know, other people and so on. And then, um, yeah, you didn't realize it was a mistake and so on. Right. And also, it is difficult to check the source if you didn't understand Japanese. The problem was people who spread the concept didn't understand Japanese. Therefore, they didn't understand other meanings and nuances of the word ikigai. So they, they, they look at that Venn diagram. And then that was the only information they had about ikigai. You know, this is what Ikigai is, and they started sharing it, but it's not a complete picture. Or uh, when they watched Dan Butner's TED talk, and oh, okay, Ikigai is the longevity factor in Okinawa, and that's the only information they have about Ikigai, and then spread the message based on that limited knowledge, then, yeah, you cannot 
and give a holistic understanding of what ikigai is. Therefore, you need to understand the Japanese language and the cultural context and how ikigai is used by everyday Japanese people, right? So next time, please, yeah, check with the Japanese person about ikigai. However, regular Japanese people don't even understand what ikigai means. I mean, we, we use the word in our, so you, if you ask them like, you know, what is your ikigai? People can probably say, okay, coffee is my ikigai or, you know, spending time with my grandchildren is my ikigai and so on. But to explain the meaning of ikigai, most people probably cannot. Yeah, but there are experts in Japan, like Japanese researchers who uh, wrote many books about ikigai and they can explain the meaning of ikigai. Yeah, so to source the information, you need to go to the Japanese researchers, right? Uh, for example, uh, Ikigai Nitsuite by Kamiya Mieko. Yeah, so this is Mieko Kamiya, uh, who is the author of Ikigai Nitsuite, which means about Ikigai, yeah, uh, is the authority in the field of Ikigai studies. Yeah, this book is almost like a Bible in Ikigai research. So every Japanese Ikigai researcher um, makes a reference uh, on this book when they talk about Ikigai. Yeah, so to fully understand about Ikigai, you need to read this book. But unfortunately, the book is not translated into English, therefore you cannot read it. But now, Nicholas Kemp in Ikigai Kam introduce, introduced yeah, uh, Ikigai Nitsuite, yeah, very much in detail. Yeah? So, I mean, it's different from reading the original, but you get the idea of what Mieko Kamiya was trying to say. Yeah, and not only Mieko Kamiya's research, yeah, he, he basically interviewed many Japanese researchers and other people about Ikigai. So it is a comprehensive book about uh, how the regular Japanese people uh, use the word Ikigai to how Ikigai is researched in Japan and how it can be interpreted to the Western con con context and so on. So it is one of the most comprehensive books written about Ikigai. And I think it is the most comprehensive book written about Ikigai in English. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Again, my name is Sachiaki Takamiya. I am the author of the Ikigai Diet and Ikigai Biohacking. Right, so if you want to know uh, the optimal way to activate autophagy and feed your diverse gut microbiome, please read the Ikigai Diet. And if you want to know a method to naturally biohack yourself, please read Ikigai Biohacking. And if you like this video, please give me your thumb up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Live with your Ikigai!